Nine. The Radio Wamo Breakfast. Suckling on the teat of tech. With Paul Brislin. Yeah, twitter.com forward slash Paul Brislin. Yes, let's talk high tech. G'day there, Paul. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, very good. Now, last week uh, we talked about this um, telecommunications bill and the submissions mm. that people needed to, uh, to make towards it That's to make right. sure that everyone was having their say. Um, this thing gets dodgier and dodgier, doesn't it? Well, I've certainly got a lot of concerns about it, and my day job, I should point out, is um, as the chief executive at Two Ends, oh, the okay. Users Association. Put, Better slip that in. Put the harness on then. Why put don't the you? Harness. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it doesn't chafe this one though, because <laughs> basically, I'm working for you, Wamo. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me both. I'd which say, which yeah. insinuates something else for the other harness, but we won't go through. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> no. But um, um, yeah, this is this is. Uh, so I, I rocked up to the select committee yesterday um, to tell them a little bit in an oral submission about what I thought the, um, the the problems were with the bill. And there are there are quite a few. You know, they've basically taken away all of the safeguards. They're signing away ten years worth of regulatory oversight. So at the moment, the Commerce Commission keeps an eye on the telco sector. Uh, and does quite a good job of bringing them into line if they step out. Um, uh, the investors in this new fibre network that the government once built said, oh, oh, we don't like the sound of that. No, no. How about a regulatory holiday for 10 years? And the government said, sure. 10 so years? in the bill, 10 years, and not internet years either, you know, 10 real years. <laughs> so that's the equivalent. I mean, if you think back 10 years ago, yeah. uh, I wasn't using Twitter. I wasn't using Facebook. There was no, no YouTube. No. I wasn't even using Google. No. And more importantly, I didn't know that I needed to use Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Google. These days, I can't imagine life without some of those things. And and, and my so, bro- my broadband was was coming down at a at a at a cool 128 kilobits per second. <laughs> oh, I was better than you. I had two meg. I was feeling pretty <laughs> really? slick, but I was paying through the nose for that. And uh, the idea that you can set prices now for the next decade, uh, remove regulatory oversight, and expect to have a competitive, vibrant, dynamic market, mm. um, strike me as being a bit um, a bit naive, really. Yeah. So, um, okay. The regulator, regular, regulatory mor- yep. morator- moratorium. It's it's called a uh, technically it's a it's a regulatory forbearance period, <laughs> right. um, where they get regulatory certainty. Now, uh, Labour immediately shot that idea of certainty in the foot by pointing out that if they get elected, uh, they will immediately review the whole thing and they will not feel themselves on a bound to abide by a ten-year regulatory holiday. Yeah. What do you think to that, Mr. Telecom? And the telecom guys. Um, uh, should have run screaming from the room at that point. But basically, I think um, they're thinking, well, it doesn't really matter. You're not likely to get elected this time. We'll worry about that in four years. Now, whose who's hands does this play into? This, does this play into a particular telco's hands at all? Well, yeah, at the moment, the lead bidder for um, for the Auckland and for mm. most of the country is Telecom. Oh, of course um, it is. You know, so the they... Lord they... Sauron, the Dark Knight. <laughs> Well, I don't want to descend to that kind of level. You know, I, I don't want this to be a, oh, it's true, a case though. of if um, if telecom get it that bad because they're telecom, there are plenty of reasons why telecom could do quite a good job. They've got a lot of fibre in the ground already. They're, they're going to split themselves in half, so it won't be the telecom of old. It'll be telecom 2 is the retail arm and chorus 2 is the new network arm. The network arm will be spun off as a separate company. It'll have its own board of directors. It'll be on the uh, stock exchange and um, they will be required to provide fibre to all players, hopefully on an equal footing. But even that is up for grabs. You know, they may provide it on an equal footing. They may provide it on an equal footing, but provide telecom retail with it on a different footing. Mm. It's it's all very much being um, discussed behind the scenes in closed rooms. Nobody's allowed in. There's no Commerce Commission oversight. There's no user group oversight. There's no... Um, uh, involvement from the rest of the industry. So everybody's pretty much sitting there going, what is going on? So, uh, is, so we expressed our um, interest in it at the build yesterday. Uh, yeah, so is the government listening to you? Will we see um, some light sh- uh, shone on all this? Well, this is, this is the select committee, which now takes apart the bill. The bill's been presented to government. It's got two parts. It's got the bill itself and then this supplementary order paper, which outlines how telecom would be broken up. They now get to pick through it. Um, the select committee... Um, some of them were asleep at the wheel. Some of them couldn't have cared less. Some of them were actively involved in figuring out what's going on. And from what I'm told, that's quite common with select committees. And um, uh, so the next step will be uh, they, they recommend some changes or not, depending on how they're feeling. 
um, they might be quite happy with it. Uh, it then goes back, it gets read again in Parliament, they have another vote, it goes back a third time. The problem I've also got with it is that the whole process is incredibly rushed. Mm. So we had one week to look at the um, supplementary order paper and present um, uh, recommendations. We had 10 minutes to speak at the Select Committee hearing, um, uh, although we managed to stretch that out a wee bit. You know, it's, it's Did you have one of those of, microphones in front of you? Was it was it like that? It's a senator of, kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like that, but oh. without the microphone. Oh, brilliant. Like the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. Ad- addressing Congress thing. Oh, it I was, like that. It was. Yeah. It was a room of, of nine people, one of whom was Tao Henry. Tao, if you're listening, pay bloody attention. You're too busy <laughs> tweeting about the rugby. <laughs> I'm just was, saying. Was, was, yeah. it, was, was Jerry Browning there? No, no, oh, we okay. had Roger Douglas, though, and Roger actually, Sir so Roger, he um, he asked some good questions, and he was really interested. He was really interested in the whole idea that uh, we've got all of these private businesses to start investing, and now we're going to squash them like bugs. Oh. Oh, well, and well, he, he seemed to he, think that was a bad thing. He wasn't like, so what is this internet thing? No, 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 okay. oh, no far from it. I was quite surprised. <laughs> um, he's also incredibly old, but he's uh, he's quite intimidating <laughs> when he sits really close to you. I just off, he was my first left and sort of stared bore holes into the side of my head. Because you're like, oh, ten minutes. I, that, that face, I know that face so well. And now that's, <laughs> that's right there in front of me. And it's right there, yes, yes. They've got to figure out these things and move them around a bit. But, you know, I think I think the government will listen. I, I certainly hope they will because this is just too important, you know. Mm. This is, we're, we're planning the next decade's worth of investment. Yeah. Uh, and it's all being done secretly behind closed doors. And, and as far as I can tell, quite poorly as well. Hugely important. Now, before we go, I, I do want to touch on a story that I haven't seen uh, reported and it's, it's sort of been underreported, I guess, because everything's been overshadowed by the um, the nuclear emergency. But mm. but but uh, undersea cables that go into Japan were damaged by the earthquake, weren't they? That's right. That's right. And they can't get in to repair them because the the earthquakes are still going on. So these are the the big fiber optic cables that connect Japan with the rest of the world. Um, they've still got a lot of connectivity um, in and out of Japan. I don't think there's an issue there. But um, it did make me think that here in New Zealand, of course, we've only got one cable. We've got the Southern Cross cable. And that connects us with Australia on one side, up to Hawaii and uh, L.A. on the other side. And uh, it lands at Auckland. So, um, yeah, we've got one cable. Yeah, it's um, yeah. a p- potential kind of issue there. Optimal, isn't it, really? And although the cable is well designed and they've, they've got this, what they call a figure of eight um, ring system going, mm. so it's actually two cables, um, if you get a quake of this kind of magnitude anywhere between here and L.A., uh, I, I would say that, you know, in certain places there are single points of failure that we would really struggle with, Takapuna being one of them. Um, and, um, I've, you know, more power to the guys at Pacific Fibre who are trying to build a second Southern Cross cable. Although a quick Twitter chat with Lance Wiggs, who's involved in that project yesterday, he said, look, it's just too expensive to go somewhere else. They'd have to go to somewhere like Dunedin. Um, you don't want to land in Wellington. You certainly don't want to land in Christchurch anymore. So, you know, you're kind of stuck with Auckland. So we've really got to consider these things and figure out how we're going to protect the country because it would take, it's going to take months for uh, Japan's cables to be fixed. You could well imagine we'd be in the same boat. Yeah, absolutely. Do, and, and also, what, finishing on that, um, because, of course, that with that one cable going in, you know, if there's mm. a problem on that cable uh, affecting Internet traffic, it's hard to know whether it's just affecting New Zealand or the rest of the world. Case in point last night was... Yeah. Um, uh, Twitter appeared to be down for people in New Zealand, but I'm not well, sure. That's right. I'm not sure if it was a worldwide issue. No, no. Well, it's certainly hard to tell with Twitter, isn't it? Because sometimes it is just a fail whale, and everybody's jumping on at one time. But um, I did notice um, tweets having some trouble getting through, well, but there was nothing official on the blog, so maybe no. it was quite localized. Yeah, and and, and who knows? You know, what what's? You know, it's kind of a, a sort of a dark art. Who knows what's? Well, it, really... it really is. It yeah. is. I mean, there's a lot of capacity on the Southern Cross cable that's not used because it's so expensive. Um, I will no doubt get an angry phone call shortly um, to complain that they're not expensive at all. But, yeah. you know, all of the telcos complain about international connectivity prices. And uh, if nothing else, we need uh, we need a competitor just to bring those prices down. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much, Paul. Fighting the, fighting the good fight. We'll see you next week. No worries. Paul Brisson on Twitter as well.